Game Freak dropped an absolute bomb on us during the Pokemon Direct when they revealed the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass, consisting of two separate expansions that add a ton of content to these games that looks absolutely incredible. From new areas and Pokemon to new Galarian forms and characters as well, this expansion pass is proving to add a ton of absolutely amazing content to Pokemon Sword and Shield that is going to be an absolute delight to play through, but almost as interesting as what was officially shown off and put in the limelight are the secrets within the expansion pass trailer and the new information that was provided that seem to provide some secrets that have a ton of intrigue to them. These are things that either were brushed over purposely in the trailer or provided a sense of mystery in and of themselves when they were shown off that really add a new sense of wonder to this expansion pass on top of the awesomeness that it already is obviously providing. And that is exactly what I wanted to go over today. So in this video, we are going to cover eight huge secrets in the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion. And without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing I am going to cover here is actually a pretty good look that can be pretty easily missed at Galarian Slowbro. While we do get an official look at Galarian Slowpoke and a pretty good look at Galarian Slow King, Slowbro is much more quickly swept away before we can actually get a pretty good look at it. But if you look closely in the bottom right hand corner at the very beginning of the trailer, you can actually see a pretty good, albeit somewhat blurry image of Galarian Slowbro. We can clearly see its purple hands and it's got some kind of purple ornamentation on the top of its head as well. It's really hard to tell if it's gaining any kind of typing from Galarian Slowpoke, but nevertheless you can see it pretty well here, even though it was kind of brushed over, so I thought it was worth highlighting in the video. Another new thing in the trailers that is really intriguing has to do with one of the new legendary Pokemon that was introduced, specifically Urshifu. Now, Urshifu is a bear-like legendary fighting type Pokemon that's the evolved form of another legendary Pokemon, that being Cub Fu. But the most interesting thing about this Pokemon specifically are its two different forms. Urshifu has two different forms that it can evolve into from Cub Fu that alter its appearance as well as its typing. But the most interesting thing about all of this is that its two forms bear a striking resemblance to the box art legendaries of Pokemon Sword and Shield, Zacian and Zamazenta. Not only do the colors for these two forms match up with Zacian and Zamazenta, but it just seems like this Pokemon and its two forms were meant to kind of have some sort of resemblance to the box art legendaries, and it seems like there might be something more going on here than meets the eye. It could be the case that this doesn't really amount to much of anything, but I also know I'm not the only one to have seen this resemblance, so it'll be really interesting to see what kind of connection these Pokemon might have, and if they do have a connection, what is it, and what does it mean not only for these Pokemon, but for the entire lore and history of the entire Galar region. Up next, we're going to talk about the new Regis, and boy oh boy are these guys absolutely fascinating. Not only do they look absolutely amazing, and just the fact that they exist is absolutely incredible as well, but when you start to think about it, they actually have a lot of interesting possible implications beyond just their design. Because the Reggie family of Pokemon are such a tight-knit group, we are definitely going to learn in some way the connection of these new Reggies to the previous Reggies. And not only does that include Reggie Ice, Reggie Rock, and Reggie Steel, but it also includes Reggie Gigas, who is native to, you guessed it, the Sinnoh region. With it very much seeming like we are right on the heels of a Diamond and Pearl remake, now is a very, very interesting time to introduce new Regis because as I said, they are eventually going to have to have an established relationship with Reggie Gigas, who of course is native to the Sinnoh region. And it just seems like the perfect kind of thing to do for a remake where you introduce some new content like this that not only connects to the Sinnoh-based games, therefore adding some new, fresh, exciting content for the remakes, but also acts as a primer for the remakes in this expansion pass as well. 
I definitely think these Regis are going to have more going on with them than whatever their role is in this expansion pass, so it's going to be very interesting to kind of track their progress over the next couple of years. Another thing I wanted to mention about these guys is that the braille on their faces actually resembles the letters X and Y, which probably means nothing, but with the way that anything and everything in the Pokemon world seems to connect back to X and Y in the sixth generation, and we feel like it's somehow eventually going to be redeemed even though it probably never is, I thought made it worth mentioning, so uh, yeah, there you go, take it for what you will. Moving on though, another point that I found interesting is that it was stated during the Crown Tundra section of the Direct that a certain person, quote unquote, is going to act as your guide character for this portion of the expansion pass. Seemingly very similar to the way that Mustard is going to act as your guide character for the Isle of Armor expansion. The thing that makes this interesting though is that while Mustard was officially shown off and introduced to us, this certain person was not, which obviously adds a little bit of secrecy and intrigue to whoever this character is. However, it's very likely that he was shown off to us, just not officially introduced, because it's probably this guy that was shown off, but not really mentioned or formally introduced in the Crown Tundra section of the trailer. He didn't really get any kind of formal introduction as I said, but he very much looks like a rock climber, and he matches up with the outfit that you're wearing, very likely meaning he will be this certain person. It is rather curious, however, how they would show him off in the direct, refer to him as a certain person, but not formally introduce him as the actual official explorer character, and kind of keep those two pieces of information separate. That once again makes it seem like there is more to this character than he is leading on, and something I found particularly interesting is that he actually looks a lot like Grant, once again from the Kalos region, not only because they have a similar skin tone and look the same visually, but this new character very much seems like he could be rock based in nature, which is the same type that Grant uses in Pokemon X and Y, so maybe they're related somehow, maybe this guy is Grant's dad? I don't know, but it seems like there are a lot of very interesting possibilities for this character. Another thing that was just barely touched on yet seems extremely interesting is that there are actually going to be challenges in the game that require you to not only beat the game, but also the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra expansions. It was stated in the trailer that once you do all three of these things, that new challenges will unlock within the game for you to discover, but it did not say anything about what these challenges are. It did kind of seem like they might be battle related in some way, but nevertheless, any challenge that requires you to beat every major section of the game and essentially beat all three quests is definitely going to be interesting to say the least, and I'm really looking forward to finding out what it actually is. Now, this next one isn't really a secret or anything like that, but it is something that I feel like is going to go over a lot of people's heads, so I figured I would mention it anyway. I have mentioned it once before on the channel, but nearly every single set of base games from every single generation of Pokemon is represented by some shade of red and blue, which is most assuredly a subtle reference at Pokemon Red and Blue, the original games in the series. This also holds true for Sword and Shield as well, where the primary colors of those games are Cyan and Magenta, and this likely reference actually seems to go a little bit deeper with the expansion passes as well. The primary representative colors for the two expansion passes are yellow and green specifically, which just so happen to be the exact colors that were represented in the other two Generation 1 games, yellow version and green version, meaning that most likely, once again, this is a very subtle homage to the Pokemon games that started the entire franchise. A very interesting anecdote is one that comes from the Pokemon Sword and Shield website, where it states about the new legendary Pokemon Cub Fu that it isn't actually from Galar, at least in the current time. According to the Pokemon Sword and Shield website, Cub Fu originally lived in Galar long ago, but over time it actually migrated away from this region and now lives in far away regions, which is where the Cub Fu that will play an important role in the story of the expansion pass is from. This is a very interesting piece of backstory for any kind of Pokemon, and naturally it brings about the question, where is Cub Fu from if it's not currently from the Galar region? 
Kung Fu, as well as its inspiration, have very clear and strong ties to Chinese culture. So maybe it comes from some kind of Chinese region we haven't seen before, or maybe it comes from some kind of generic Japanese region. Maybe one of the four that we have already seen in generations one through four. And you know, shot in the dark here, but it does say on the website that Cub Fu live in faraway mountains, and arguably the most iconic mountain in the Pokemon world is Mount Coronet, which just so happens to be in Sinnoh of all places, which is also a Japanese-based region, so maybe Cub Fu has some ties to the Sinnoh region, and maybe this is some kind of connection to Diamond and Pearl remakes? Maybe? Huh? No? Not at all? Well, hey, you can't hate me for trying. And last but not least, the final secret I am going to go over in this video also has to do with Cub Fu, as well as its evolution, Urshifu. A very interesting thing about these two Pokemon is that Cub Fu will evolve into one of two Urshifu forms, which both have their own appearance and typing. But according to the Pokemon Sword and Shield website, Cub Fu will evolve into one of these two forms depending on the choices that you make during your adventure. So apparently, based on what we do or don't do within the expansion pass will influence Cub Fu in some way and cause it to evolve into one of these two forms. And the idea of your choices affecting the outcome of a Pokemon's evolution like this is absolutely fascinating, but we obviously really don't know what that means at the same time. So I am absolutely, truly looking forward to finding out what this is all about because it sounds extremely, extremely interesting and awesome. And there you have it everybody, those are some secrets from the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion. I am unbelievably hyped for this expansion, and these secrets only make me even more hyped. So if you guys feel the same way and you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and let me know what you think about all these things in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you're new for more Pokemon content all the time, including plenty more on the expansion passes for Sword and Shield. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can check me out on Spotify for my Pokemon remixes, check out my Pokemon Cardinal project if you haven't yet, and you can also hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as all my videos go live. With that said, I'll be back on Tuesday with another video, so until then, as always, I love you guys very, very much, and I will smell you guys later.